This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in a, an OK location of Venice Beach, joined by Matthew Macklin. I guess the burning question this week is, should two YouTubers be headlining the card at the Stable Centre, Matt? Should they? They are, aren't they? they? You can debate whether it should or it shouldn't, but the fact is they are. And, you know, I suppose if they were proclaiming they were, you know, top boxers on a level, then of course you, you couldn't entertain that. But they're not, they're, it's a, they've had a white collar fight. I don't really know the, the, the social media YouTube world, but they've got huge following. They've got this bit of needle or beef that they had the white collar fight for. Now they want to do uh, like a real professional bout, so that's so in order to get licensed, they have to go through the same procedures. I mean, they're, they're both physically fit and well and athletic, as you can see, and they have trained hard. They've been granted a professional license, and because of their profiles, you know, there's, there's a huge event happening at the Staples Centre, of which there are Devin Haney, Billy Joe Saunders, and many other, you know, future world-class fighters fighting on the card. Yes, they are the main event, uh, and it really, it's two guys making their pro debut against each other. But it is what it is, I suppose. You know, these are these are. I mean, we're not we're not covering it. I mean, Sky are covering it. But me personally, Johnny Nelson, former fighters, I'm not. YouTubers are. I just think you know, it's uh, it's generating a lot of money, a lot of interest. You know, it could also bring a lot of new fans over to boxing that are going to go to the event live, soak up the atmosphere, see see some real life top quality fighters in Billy Joe Saunders, Devin Haney and the guys on the undercard and, and you know they may we, it may, may well attract a new you know a, a new demographic of, of supporters to boxing so that can only be a positive uh, and I'm, I'm quite intrigued really to see how they get on it's um, and just to see the event but look I don't think anyone within boxing is, is trying to dress this, dress this up as anything that it's not you know we know what it is but it's, it's obviously generating a lot of interest. It's uh, you know it's, it's a sold out arena at the Staples Centre. I, I, yeah, I think I think I think the positives outweigh the negatives. You said they're not proclaiming to be boxers or whatever, but KSI has made some comments uh, that he feels he could beat a few professional fighters and professional fighters who are licensed right now. And Logan Paul has come out and said that within four years he can become heavyweight champion of the world. So are they just trying to sell Saturday night, or you know if they're being genuine? I don't know, it's the real answer. I, I would say that it's tongue in cheek and uh, it's a bit of a. Uh, I mean, that they're a little bit mad, aren't they? You know, they say mad stuff and that, you know, that attracts the youth, the young crowd that buy into that, jump on it, love it. So that, you know, they're, they're kind of. They're, they're uh, bizarre characters in, in ways. Uh, so they're going to probably say a lot of stupid stuff, especially when the adrenaline's going and they're up there and the fight's getting near. They're still going to say a lot of crazy things, but um, we don't. We want to say we're not dressing up for something that it isn't. Do you know what I mean? The boxing, you know, Scottish sports, boxing people, the boxing fraternity, they're all watching the fight. We, we're here because we're covering Billy Joe Saunders and Devin Haney and the undercard fights. That, that's what we're doing. Uh, yes, that's the main attraction, the main event. And I am, look, I am actually looking forward to seeing it because I'm you will watch it. Oh, I'm definitely going to watch it. I've, I've, I've been to quite a few white collar events of um, people I know, and I've had to say it was, it was a great night because you've got two guys that really, you know, they're not, they're not boxers. They won't, they won't know how to pace themselves. They're going to be knackered after a few rounds. <laughs> so then, when you're tired and you see guys digging deep, throwing haymakers, it's, it's, it's. It, it's entertaining, let me tell you. It's hilarious, it's entertaining. Now, hopefully no one gets badly hurt, obviously. But, you know, they're, 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 gonna do, they're doing six threes with small gloves. They're gonna know a difference. When they've been sparring with 16 ounce gloves and head guards, they get in and they have 10 ounce Plato Rays or Grants or whatever gloves they're using, and they get hit. They're gonna think, whoa, that's, they're gonna feel the difference. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued. I suppose I think I think it'll be entertaining. I, I don't. I'm not taking either of them seriously about carrying on their boxing career. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But I'm not. What I mean, I suppose the point I'm making is, I'm taking it for what it is, and I'm going to enjoy it for what it is. Okay, I want to take your mind back to last weekend in Las Vegas. I'm guessing you watched Canelo Kovalev. Thoughts on the fight? 
Yeah, I, I didn't watch the whole fight. I watched it afterwards. The next day, I seen the, the highlights. But um, I mean, he walked him down. I think he knew he was going to catch him at some point, and he just walked him down. Um, Kovalev was, you know, started really well. Was bagging the early rounds. Jab was good. Kept a good distance. But I think he was winning. If he was winning the battles, but he was losing the war. You know, Canelo was walking him down, tiring him out, and he was going to catch him at some point. And um, you know, when, when he did, when he did get to him, he, he, he went through the gears, and, and the, the left hook that finished it was an absolute peach. Out of Gennady Golovkin in a trilogy, Billy Joe Saunders, Callum Smith, and let's throw in Dimitri Bivol. Who would you like to see him face? Yeah, and Demetrius Andrade. You could throw in that as yeah. well. You know, world champion. Yeah, I mean, this, they're all good options, and. Uh, Look, I think Golovkin deserves a trilogy. That said, I don't. I, I think Canelo beats him more easily now than the, uh, the last one. I mean, the, the last two. First fight, I thought Golovkin was robbed. Second fight, I thought Golovkin nicked him. Also, maybe Canelo did. It was a fight that could have gone either way. Uh, I think next time he beats him comfortably. I can't think he. I don't know if he stops him, but I think comprehensively oh, yeah, beats him next time. He, he, he's old now, Golovkin, he, and he looked at me in his last Saturday fight. Um, and Canelo, you know, he just, book. you know, he just, he, I think he's still getting it. He's still, he's at his peak. He's in the form of his career right now. How much of a chance would you give Billy Joe Saunders in that fight? With, with Canelo? Yeah. yeah, I'll give him a chance. I, I, think, I think Billy Joe beat Golovkin now. Yeah, I, and I never thought that before, but I do now. I think uh, Golovkin slowed down. I, I think Billy Joe could outfox him over 12 rounds uh, you know there's so many options on the table within the middleweight super middleweight divisions for Canelo for Billy Joe I mean Billy Joe talking that he's going to fight Callum Smith maybe next year at Anfield he could fight Canelo he could fight Golovkin he could fight Andrade you know I think Billy will go wherever the big fights are so he's uh, undefeated he's got a world you know he's former world champion in middleweight he's, he's current reigning world champion at super middleweight so there's so many options for him you know, and uh, I, I think over these next sort of 12, 18 months, two years, I think I, I hope and I do think that all these fights will happen because everyone's kind of on the zone now. So, you know, there's no excuse for these fights not to get made. OK, now, over the past year or so, I've talked to you about the WBC a lot because they made some highly debatable decisions. They made a couple of more. We'll start firstly with uh, Dylan White. God knows how long he's been mandatory for. Now he's been pushed back to February 2021. Tyson Fury is now officially the mandatory for that WBC belt. What do you make of that move from, from that governing body? Yeah, well, look, I don't know all the facts. So I hate talking when I don't know all the facts. Um, it's, mess, it's messy, isn't it? It's a messy situation. Um, and it's a frustrating situation for, for, for Dillian White, probably more than anyone, for the fans as well. And then it's, I don't know, I, I just, look, whatever... WBC, you just want the best people fighting the best, and you know, Dillian White, I'm sorry, uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are going to fight in February, assuming he beats Ortiz, which, you know, the first fight was a tricky one, so who knows, but, um, you know, and then, and then obviously Joshua Ruiz happening before Christmas, so who knows what way that's going to go, you know, it's an ever-changing landscape, isn't it, and the WBC thing, like I say, I don't, I don't know enough about the facts, so it's just, I just know it's a messy situation. The, the facts are that Dylan White was mandatory. He still is mandatory, but from February 2021, basically allowing Wild and Fury to have a trilogy. Essentially. Uh, yeah, I think there is precedent within your governing bodies that a unification fight can supersede a mandatory. You know, although Fury, yeah, 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 I don't know, yeah, 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 I'm confused as I'm talking about it, so, and I'm in the, I'm working in boxing, so, what does Joe Public think? Yeah, exactly, you know, well, I think Mauricio him said, he, he's confused himself, he admitted, so, no, messy, 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 and the other, well, debatable move from WBC was uh, handing Devin Haney the, the full version of the title and making Lomachenko the franchise champion. Do you think that's good for boxing where kind of Lomachenko and Canelo, these franchise champions, don't have to face their mandatories, they're protected from them. And uh, you have another world champion, Devin Haney, who six weeks ago just fought for the interim title. It's bullshit. It's a bullshit situation. We need less belts in boxing, not more. You know, it's uh, boxing is a, well, could, is, is, could be a mainstream sport, but always was. 
you know. But if you're if you're a casual fan, look, we we are hardcore fans. We're in the industry, and we we confuse the situation. So how what how can a casual fan possibly keep up with that or work it out? And when they, and if they can't understand it or work it out, they, you lose interest. You know, you don't you don't understand the sport, you don't understand the rules. You don't really enjoy following it. When you do, obviously it changes. So, you know, it, it's not it's not good for boxing. All these more about that. And a franchise champion, what I mean, what is that? You know, it's just no, I, I don't think it's good at all. I think I think it's a bad move. Bad move by WBC. It's bad for boxing. Okay, Matthew Macklin, hopefully we'll be talking more positive stuff throughout the week. Yeah, uh, yeah good catching up with you and uh, yeah, we'll see you about. Cheers, sure. Thank you.